we're at a major mine at the uh, explosive storage magazines. I uh, wanted to point out some, uh, some of the features of this magazine that uh, are required by the code. Over here, we have a box that is intended for authorized personnel entering the magazine area to deposit any lighters, matches, cigarettes, or any devices capable of producing a spark or flame. Off to the, the side of that, we have the, the required signage for the magazine. Danger explosives, keep out. No open flame or smoking within 10 meters of the magazines. If you look off behind me, you can see a big concrete wall there or block wall. That wall is uh, used to decouple the magazines. If there was an event in one magazine, it would not affect the other magazine. And we've got two magazines here, one for detonators and one for explosives. We're standing by the required signage for, uh, for magazine areas. Uh, this magazine is located in a, uh, a remote area on the mine site. Uh, it's not frequented by personnel uh, other than authorized blasting personnel. You'll notice that it's a, a high contrast sign, uh, but it doesn't attract undue attention. All right, uh, you'll notice that there's a sign here uh, indicating that the herbicide has been sprayed in the area. Uh, the reason they're spraying a herbicide here is to ensure that uh, vegetative growth uh, does not accumulate uh, in the in the magazine area. The vegetative growth could be uh, could become a uh, flammable uh, material, which is not allowed within 10 meters of uh, of any explosives magazines. You notice that there's a uh, a large chain link fence here. The gate here is locked, and and you can see the uh, the the very strong. Uh, industrial strength lock, which is not easily overcome. Okay, we're standing in front of the uh, explosives magazine. In any explosive storage area, there's generally two magazines, one for explosives and one for detonators. Uh, we wanna keep the two apart until the last possible moment uh, when they are brought together uh, when a blaster is preparing a blast. We've got our vents here, but as you can see, they're protected by heavy plate steel uh, very difficult for, uh, for somebody to uh, enter the magazine through the vents uh, as, they, as they are protected. You'll notice the hinges on the doors, very robust hinges. Uh, there are specifications for magazines. The lock for the magazine is in here and uh, they're very specialized locks and very specialized keys. Uh, only authorized personnel are allowed to have the keys to a magazine. Rob is an authorized person. He is in possession of the magazine keys. Rob, if you wouldn't mind opening the mag for me, please. Okay, you'll notice that the, uh, the cover for the lock makes it very difficult to access the, the actual locking mechanism. This is done deliberately so that you can't uh, drill out the lock or use any power tools to over, uh, defeat the lock and enter the magazine uh, without authorization. Now, uh, Federal regulations require that uh, magazines be checked every day and you need to be able to uh, demonstrate and prove that you have been conducting these checks. Uh, this particular operation, they use an electronic device which uh, comes and scans this little button here, which, uh, which will, when, when scanned with the electronic device, will uh, record the time and date of the, uh, of the magazine check. We need to make sure that the explosives are, uh, are properly labeled and in the code you will see that there are, uh, there's a list of about uh, 10 or 11 uh, different items that have to be uh, uh, listed on the boxes of explosives. The blaster who is receiving the explosives will, will uh, ensure that those markings are, are on the, uh, the cases and are properly, uh, properly uh, displayed. Uh, the magazine is required to be kept clean and tidy, grit-free. Uh, they, they will likely clean the magazine uh, at least weekly, but uh, on a daily basis if, if required. There is a requirement for a log to be, uh, to be in place and in use in the magazine. Any explosives removed or placed back into the magazine or delivered to the magazines 
uh, have to be uh, have to be uh, logged and signed by the person uh, receiving the explosives or removing the explosives. So Rob has the ma magazine log here, and as you can see, it's uh, dated and signed, uh, and all of the explosives, uh, the quantities and the type of explosives that are removed from the magazine or returned to the magazine are listed here and they're signed off. Uh, thanks, Rob. Okay, as you can see, we've got a very clean, orderly, well-organized magazine. Inventory is, is stacked neatly and, and uh, in, in, the order, in, the, in the order that it was received, it will be used in the inverse order of, that it was received. Uh, in other words, it will be used uh, the older product first. You notice the floor is very clean. You notice there's a red line around the, around the magazine. That's the stacking level. We're not allowed to stack explosives any higher than that red line. As you can see, the blasters have a broom in here for keeping the magazine clean and tidy. And, uh, and as you can see as well, it is very clean, very tidy, and very well organized. Um, I think the blasters here are doing a very good job of, uh, of managing their explosives inventory. Okay, I removed the magazine rules from the magazine temporarily just to show uh, our audience uh, what they look like and that indeed these magazine rules are posted within the magazine as is required by law. NRCAN or Natural Resources Canada uh, certifies uh, the design and construction of these magazines. Uh, they, they are designed to a very specific uh, set of standards and requirements. You see we have here a, a fire extinguisher. Uh, this is a, uh, a dry chemical, 20 pound ABC. Uh, it's, it's placed here to, uh, to uh, aid in uh, extinguishing any fires that may occur uh, around the magazine or on, on any uh, authorized vehicles that may be entering the magazine area. We're now standing in front of the uh, detonator magazine. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller. Uh, uh, there's not quite as much uh, um, volume and bulk with the detonators. Uh, the detonators are stored separately from the explosives uh, to ensure that uh, there aren't any uh, accidental detonations. If a, if a detonator were to, to detonate here, uh, the wall over behind us uh, it will separate and decouple the detonators from the explosives magazine. This magazine has uh, all of the same features. It has the, uh, the scanning button, the security for the door, heavy duty hinges. It's got the fire extinguisher and vents. It also is required to have uh, the logbook uh, and, is, uh, and magazine rules posted and is kept very tidy and neat. Also uh, provided uh, within the magazine site, uh, this mine has, uh, has uh, provided for the blasters a sea can to uh, store uh, materials and tools that are not allowed to be stored in the explosives magazine. As, uh, as a blaster, you will know that only explosives are to be stored in explosives magazines and detonators in detonator magazines.